rubber band here with a special edition of Key Machine Chronicles. I recently picked up for the Lishi Clipper some space and depth guides to try to accurately cut some Schlage keys in the field with this Lishi Clipper. These are 3D printed uh, on redteamtools.com. I'm not paid uh, or endorsing or anything about this product. I paid to get these. Uh, I am simply trying to get a working key for the sake of people who don't have, you know, $1,000 to throw on an originator or have a pack-a-punch or just want to be able to nip out some keys in their recreational. Luxford is a thing. So, so here, here's what we got. Um, we've got depths one through nine. Schlage also has a zero depth, but it would be nigh impossible to nick off 15 thousandths accurately with this thing. Um, so I wouldn't sweat it. Um, I did encounter one issue with this so far. I have gotten a couple keys to work, but it's um, one of those things that we're gonna experience it together. You're along here for the journey. So what we have here inside is we need to know where our spaces are, and this is a good way to do it, this space jig here. So you just tuck your key blank in there, and then you just need to find a way to mark in here. I use a scribe, and I do that because I don't have to worry about it running out of ink. It's uh, always gonna be sharp versus brass. Uh, it's not gonna mark my fingers, and I can pretty much do this blindfolded. I like to do this inside the flat because that's the one that I'm going to be lining up at the top of this cutter jaw. So I'm going to see it and I'm going to line up my line with this line. All right, so fits pretty well. If anything, what I would do is I would make these channels narrower and specifically for a scribe. Um, and then uh, if I were to be Red Team Tools, I would start selling scribes. Because they also got a magnet. And those are cool. All right, so you can probably see this. See, uh, it marks it very distinctly, which I like. So you're going to know where your cuts are. I'm going to tuck away our space jig. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, using construction core because they're pretty accurate. They're a genuine Schlage cylinder. So they're gonna be a little pickier than an average, like an Ilco or GMS or some other everyday cylinder that people use or locksmiths sell, what have you. So first cut, we're going to just slide on our depth gauge here and it's gonna just fit right in that little cutout. So, gonna slide. So, there's this bottom ward here. So, you can see that angle that's gonna meet up with this. So, you can see slide there. And then you look at the lines on top, and we're just gonna line the lines up. The first cut's gonna be a three. So, I like to put pressure, turn, I'm gonna turn this this way and try and keep it as flat against the cutting surface as possible, which will let this hopefully cut the flattest flat it can. Okay, slide that off, tuck it away. Under the next cut, which is a four. All right, it's seated well. Gonna line the lines up. So, you can probably see that. Line to line. Okay, turn and get this as flat as possible. Good work. Go team. That's you, the viewer. You're part of my team. So that means if you're watching this, by default, you're rooting for me. So thanks. Um, I don't sign autographs, really. Rubber band doesn't really look like a good name in any scroll. Anyway, so, all right, let's line this up. Get the seven pinched out of this. Get the line lined up as well as I can. Do a little turn trick. It's loud, huh? All right. 
Next cut is A5. Love that for us. Uh, truly an experience, a revelation. Uh, one thing that I really like about these is that they are very snug. Um, one bad thing about that is that uh, China, or at least not China, because China makes many things very well. I want to make that clear. Um, these are going to have slight machining intolerances. So there might be one of these that's a little too fat or something like that. So anyway, let's get a, let's get the five knocked out. All right. Gonna turn. Okay. Pop that off. All right. And now we're uh, up to our problem area, which is the nine. So uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. If you want to do a nine cut, or at least with my version of these clippers, if you have a slightly different one, and there might be one that exists, I do not know. Um, if you want to cut a nine, you're going to have to do it in increments because check this out. It butts up against the back of the clipper. So um, you have to do it in stages. I don't want to do, so uh, when I do that, I want to make sure that I don't cut too close to the nine originally. So when I start cutting it down, it doesn't, uh, what, what am I trying to say? So. That way, if I get too close to a nine, I can still cut the rest of the nine all the way and not leave material. That might be kind of difficult to do. So um, I do know that this cut is going to be a four, and it's until I cut it away, it's going to have enough material to equal this much mass. So it's going to be as close to a zero depth as possible, and going from a zero to a nine is a, the whole crux of the problem. So I'm going to cut um, the next cut's value first which is a four. So if you're doing decode work and stuff, it helps to kind of do this in the way that you would space and depth keys where you do um, all of the depths. So if like all of your values are, you know, three and below, and there's at least a two depth step between them, uh, go ahead and knock those out first. So let's go ahead and cut this out. Make sure we get seated properly. All right. Do the turn. All right. So I'm going to do the nine too. Um, so I'll be able to do the rest of it. And I think there will be enough material removed to where I'll be able to put it all the way into the jaw. That's the hope. So if uh, hopefully that solves the problem, you know, I'm just, I'm going through the journey with you. We're all wanderers on this big ball of mud. I'm just playing with keys. All right, so looks like there's still enough material there to be bothersome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the key blank in first and then uh, put it on there and kind of nick it away. So, all right, line the line up. All right. So now I'm, uh, I'm butted up against that extra material up at the top, but I think I'm close enough to a nine to where if I cut it away, it will be a problem. So I'm gonna do it remove just enough material here to where when I go back down, it's not going to be an issue. I want to make sure to line the lines up. It was a little bit off. All right. Okay. I'm going to push it the rest of the way forward and make sure the line's still lined up. Make sure everything's seated properly. Sorry about if I was off camera. I'm going to finish the cut. 
All right. It sure looks good. Um, by eye, that would look pretty close to the key that I would need. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock off this little bit of material here. These are clippers after all. Why not use them for their purpose? I thought that it looked kind of jagged, so. All right. It uh, doesn't want to turn. So I can kind of see some cratering here um, on the fourth cut. So I think you're going to need to do some finish work unless you have an inaccurate cylinder or maybe some master pins in there. So I'm going to just kind of remove some material from each cut and uh, see where that takes us. Because remember, it leaves... It, it cuts it like an angle. So the flat isn't flat. It's kind of pinched up. So. All right. Still no dice. All right. What am I going to need? Okay. I think I see some stuff right here. Okay, it turned. All right, so now I'll be able to see where the crater truly is, and it is in the nine. It did not remove enough material from the nine. So I've identified the nine as the issue. That's my big hang up. So, all right, turns really well now. So the nine is the problem. So, okay, ooh, didn't, I don't wanna break that. Uh, so, Here's my general analysis. This is pretty good. This system is a great start. I don't think you're going to knock out code cut keys in a hurry and have it work the first try for these, at least not yet. There is a chance that there is um, a different version of these. I think Wen Jing, which is another uh, Chinese tool manufacturer, makes one of these that has like a big like a crow's bill that punches them out and it doesn't have this problem in the back and it could nick it out. Also, if you, if you have these, you know, you can just get in here and really take a bite out of that key. Um, if you are like too, just too far away. So, you know, this, this will do the adjustments if you don't want to do the filing, you know, you can buy thousands. So, you know, I'll go, mm, I want it, I want it to be five thousands, maybe. I'll line it up with the line. Let's see if it still works and it didn't take off too much. Yeah, still does. Okay. So you could you can do the adjustments with this if you see markings. So it makes it a little sharp, but you you can get there. And then what I would advise is Maybe taking off some of these really harsh spots and not dropping your key, you know, like that makes noise and stuff. So we got, we got close. All right. And, uh, really for these and Schlage where the difference in depths is 15 thousandths close is pretty good. You know, if you have a file or if you want to, um, knock off like to a zero or something, you can do it with this you, you know, you can, you got your spaces. So this will tell you, you got a lot of information problems like right here. So, um, overall rating, I'd give it an eight, you know, it's pretty, it's close. I don't have any real complaints, you know, you're doing a lot with pretty little, you know, if you get one of these setups, you know, they're anywhere from, you know, I don't know, like uh, 30 to 50 bucks, most places on the internet. And then this is 50 bucks and you get a really cool case. I really like the case. I like that this is all self-contained, comes with a space jig, spacing jig rather. So um, that's pretty good. So we, we've got a key and it, like, as you can see here, it does work. You know, I'm, it's fully populated, six pins. So 
Maybe I'll do a more in-depth analysis where I do a getting with one of these to kind of show how far off we are without modifying the key after we cut it and just see uh, what we can do from there. But uh, anyways, again, thank you for watching, and I've been Rubber Band.